<clears throat> Hello everyone, Miss Carol here. Thank you so much for joining me as we continue our Bible lessons. We're going to um, leave the book of Ruth now. I told you it was a very short book, wasn't it? And we're going to go into 1 Samuel because we are continuing <clears throat> with the story of the judges. And if you remember, uh, Ruth took place, according to the Bible, during the time of the Judges, and I think during the early years of the Judges. And so 1 Samuel uh, is going to tell us about the last two Judges, which, if you remember your song, is going to be Eli and Samuel. And we begin uh, with Eli, and we find out that Eli is a priest, uh, and in the tabernacle, which is at Shiloh. Not only then is he a priest, but he's a judge over Israel. And our story begins with a man whose name is Elkanah, who is from the tribe of Ephraim. And if you remember, Ephraim and Manasseh were the two sons of Joseph. And so he's a descendant of Joseph and lived in the hill country of Ephraim. And so let's just begin learning about Elkanah and his family. Beginning in verse 2 of 1 Samuel, chapter 1. And Elkanah had two wives. One was called Hannah, and the other Panina. Panina had children, but Hannah had none. Year after year, this man went up from his home with his family and went to sacrifice at Shiloh. And Hophni and Phinehas, who were the two sons of Eli, were also priests of the Lord there. And whenever the day came for Elkanah to go into sacrifice, he would give portions of the meat he was sacrificing to his wife, Panina, and to all her sons and daughters. But to Hannah, he gave a double portion because he loved her, and remember, she had no children. Panina, however, kept on tormenting and humiliating and teasing Hannah because she had no children. This went on year after year. Whenever Hannah went up to the house of the Lord, Panina provoked her until she cried and she cried, and she refused to eat. Elkanah, her husband, would say to her, Hannah, why are you weeping? Why don't you eat? Why are you so sad? Don't I mean more to you than ten sons? All right, so here's his family leaving their home every year, as they would do, to go up to the tabernacle to offer sacrifices and to worship. And I don't know if this was Passover, but it very well could have been that they went up every year for Passover. But I want to uh, think about something. So these two women are miserable, aren't they? Hannah is miserable because she has no children and Penina just won't let her forget about it. Brags about her own children and makes fun of her because she has none. And... Hannah feels terrible, doesn't she? Because she has no children. Let's think back <clears throat> to another man who had two wives. And you know, the Bible tells us in the book of Genesis that a marriage is between one man and one woman. And that's what makes for a happy marriage. But over time, the people of Israel didn't obey that, did they? And they went ahead, some of them, and had more than one wife. And we find out that didn't always go so well because it was against God's plan. But remember the other family? A man had two wives. They were both sisters, and they were so jealous of one another. That man, do you remember his name? Jacob. Yep, Jacob. And his two wives, do you remember? He loved Rachel. He wanted to marry Rachel, but her dad tricked him into marrying her older sister, Leah. And then he went ahead and gave her him, Rachel, as well. And there was always fighting and go going on between those two. Because once again, Leah would make fun of Rachel because she had no children, right? 
And it wasn't until years later that she finally did have two sons, uh, Joseph and Benjamin. But that was miserable for them, wasn't it? When we go against what God wants, we don't have a happy life. So let's continue on. And we're going to read in starting in verse 9. And one time when they had gone to the tabernacle and had finished eating in Shiloh, Hannah stood up and she went to the tabernacle door. Now Eli the priest was sitting in a chair by the doorpost of the tabernacle. And she was so upset and bitter in soul that Hannah cried and cried and prayed to the Lord. And she made a promise to the Lord. She said, O oh Lord Almighty, if you will just listen to my prayer, if you will look upon me and know how miserable that I am, remember me, don't forget me, but if you will give me a son, then I will give him back to you all the days of his life. And she kept on praying to the Lord. And Eli was watching and he noticed that her mouth was moving, but nothing was being said that he could hear. And so he said to her, and here's why I, I need to read this. Hannah was praying in her heart. So she wasn't praying out loud, but she was talking to God in her heart. And so her lips were moving, but you couldn't hear her voice. And Eli thought she had been drinking, and he said to her, How long will you keep on getting drunk? Get rid of your wine. Oh, and she said, Oh, that's not the truth, my Lord. I'm just a woman who's deeply troubled. I have not been drinking wine. I was just pouring out my soul to the Lord. Don't take your servant for a wicked woman. I've just been praying here out of my great anguish and grief. And Eli said to her, Well, then go in peace, and may the God of Israel grant you what you want. And she said, Oh, thank you. May I find favor in your eyes. And then she went away because she was at peace, and she ate something, and she was no longer sad. So early the next morning, before they arose and worshipped before the Lord, they then went back to their home, and in the course of time, Hannah had a son, and she named him Samuel. She said, because I asked the Lord for him, and Samuel means heard by God. God heard her prayer. And when the man Elkanah went up with all his family, to offer his annual sacrifice to the Lord, Hannah did not go. She said, I'm going to stay and take care of the baby. When he's older, a little bit older, then I will go with you and I will take him. And Elkanah, her husband, said, well, then you stay here and you take care of our son. And you can go up when he's older but make sure that you keep your promise. He knew she had promised him to the Lord. So she stayed at home and took care of him. But after he was older, when he was a little bit older, she took the boy and she went with them and they went back to the tabernacle in Shiloh. And she brought the boy to Eli, the priest, and she said, as surely as you live, my Lord, I am the woman who stood here beside you praying to the Lord. I prayed for this child and the Lord has given me what I asked of him. So now I'll keep my promise to the Lord and I'll give him back to the Lord. So for his whole life, he will be given to the Lord. And he worshiped the Lord there. And then Elkanah and his family went back home to Ramah. But the boy stayed and served before the Lord under Eli the priest. Wow, so here's the thing. 
Hannah wanted a son so badly, so she made a promise to God, if you give me a son, I, when he's older, I'm going to bring him back up here and I'm going to give him back to you. And the Bible doesn't tell us how old he was, but he was probably quite young. But she brought him up there and he would stay with Eli and he would learn to serve the Lord because that's the promise that she made. And she kept that promise because God kept kept his uh, promise to her and, and of the prayer that she made. And he gave her that son that she asked for. You know, I'm thinking of another mother that we've already talked about this year who um, had to give up her little baby too, but for different reasons. Do you remember Jochebed? And she had two other children, uh, Aaron and Miriam, but... Her, her last baby was born when the time when Pharaoh was saying, any Israelite women that have babies, baby boys, find them and throw them in the river and drown them. And so she tried to save her baby, didn't she? She made a basket, put him in that basket, put him in the river. And remember, Pharaoh's daughter found him there. And so she, Miriam went home and said, I know a lady that can take care of the baby till he's older. And of course, that woman was the mother, Jochebed. So Pharaoh's daughter named that baby Moses. And when he was probably about this age of Samuel, Jochebed took him up to the palace and gave him to Pharaoh's daughter. But she did that to save his life, didn't she? So Jochebed gave up her son, Moses, to save his life. And Hannah gave up her son, Samuel, to keep her promise to the Lord that she had made. And it tells us that Samuel served there in the tabernacle and that became his life's work. But we do learn that in verse 18, but Samuel was serving before the Lord, a boy wearing a linen ephod. And each year his mother would go up to Shiloh and she would make him a little robe and she took it when she went up with her husband to offer their sacrifices. And Eli would bless Elkanah and his wife saying, may the Lord give you children by this woman to take the place of the one she prayed for and gave back to the Lord. And then they would go home. And the Lord was gracious to Hannah and she gave birth to three more sons and two more daughters. And meanwhile, the boy Samuel grew up in the presence of the Lord. Now we find out, however, that while Eli was the priest there and his two sons, Hophni and Phinehas, were also priests, we find out in verse 22, it says, Now Eli, who was very old, learned about his sons, who were very, very wicked, and did detestable things. They did not love the Lord. And everyone knew what evil things that they were doing for the Lord. So one day, Samuel goes, and he says, Why, sons, why do you do such things? I hear from all the people about these wicked deeds of yours. No, my sons, it's not good reports that I hear spreading among the Lord's people. Now listen, if a man sins against another man, God might forgive him for it. But if a man sins against the Lord, who's going to go to the Lord and plead on his case? His sons, however, did not listen to their father. For it was the Lord's will to put them to death. But the Bible tells us that the boy Samuel continued to grow physically and in favor with the Lord and with men. And so he is doing what he's supposed to do. Samuel's sons, however, are not, are they? And now we're going to find out the best part of this story beginning in chapter 3, verse 1. And the boy Samuel served before the Lord under Eli. 
And in those days, the word of the Lord was rare. There were not many visions. But one night, Eli, who was becoming so weak that he could barely see, was lying down in his usual place. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the tabernacle of the Lord where the Ark of the Covenant was. And then the Lord called Samuel. Samuel answered, Here I am. And he ran to Eli and said, Here I am. You called me. But Eli said, I did not call. Go back and lie down. So Samuel went back and lay down. And again, the Lord called, Samuel. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. My son, Eli said, I did not call. Go back and lie down. Now Samuel did not yet know about the Lord like that. He didn't know the Lord could talk to him. And the Lord called Samuel a third time. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, here I am, you called me. And then Eli realized that it was the Lord calling Samuel. And so he told Samuel, go and lie down. And if he calls you again, say, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. The Lord came and stood there, calling as at other times, Samuel. Samuel. Then Samuel said, Speak, Lord, for your servant's listening. And the Lord said to Samuel, See, I'm about to do something in Israel that will make the ears of everyone that hears it tingle. At that time, I'm going to punish Eli's sons for all the wicked and evil things that they have done. And the priesthood is going to be taken away from Eli and from the Levites because of his son's wickedness and evil and because he did not control them and keep them from doing those wicked and evil things. So I'm going to punish them. I'm going to judge his family forever. Therefore, they will never be priests again in his family and the family of the Levites. Now Samuel lay down until morning and then he opened the doors of the house of the Lord he was afraid to tell Samuel, I mean, Eli, what he had heard. He was afraid to tell him because he knew that was very bad news. But Eli called him and said, Samuel, my son. And Samuel said, here I am. What was said to you, Eli asked. Do not hide from me. May God deal with you, be it ever so harshly, if you hide from me anything God told you. So Samuel told him everything, hiding nothing from him. And then Eli said, He is the Lord. Let him do what is good in his eyes. And the Lord was with Samuel as he grew up, and he let none of his words fail. And all of Israel, from Dan to Beersheba, recognized that Samuel was a true prophet of the Lord. And if you remember, what is a prophet? A prophet is a man that God has chosen to talk to about what is going to happen. He tells that prophet everything he plans. And that prophet, the prophet's job and responsibility is to go and tell the people everything God said. All right. And the people of Israel realized that Samuel was indeed a true prophet of the Lord and that God spoke to him. So the Lord continued to appear to Samuel at the tabernacle at Shiloh, and he revealed himself to Samuel through his word. And Samuel's word came to all of Israel. Now, in time, what God said was going to happen to his sons did. They went they decided Israel was fighting a battle against the Philistines and his sons decided, Hophni and Phinehas, that they were going to take the Ark of the Lord into the battle in that way. They could be sure they would win. But God was against them, wasn't he? He was against those evil sons. And they lost that battle. His sons were killed. Not only that, 
but the Philistines went off and carried off that Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. And when Eli finds out the news, he wasn't so surprised to find out that his sons died, but when he said, but what about the Ark of the Lord? Where is it? And he found out that it had been carried off by their enemies. He just fell over backwards. He hit his head and he died. But the Bible tells us that he was 98 years old at the time when he died. So now Eli and both his sons are dead. And just as God said, the Levites would now no longer be in the place of the high priest now. Now Samuel's job is going to be the being the priest of the Lord. But remember, what else is he? He's also a prophet of the Lord, isn't he? And not only that, but he's the last judge of Israel. So he's got three very important jobs, doesn't he? Prophet and priest and judge. All right, we're going to learn a little bit more about Samuel and his life. We won't be here next week because uh, the day before Thanksgiving, um, there's just going to be a devotional there at church. So we won't be doing classes, but we'll see you again the following week after Thanksgiving. I apologize. I forgot to send your, your work, your take-home papers, but I'm going to get those out this week, last week's and this week. So there's a coloring sheet of Hannah and Samuel. Here's a word search. All right. And then I promise I'll get the ones from last week sent out for you too. Okay. Sorry about that. All right. Have a very happy Thanksgiving. Please stay safe. We love you. And we'll see you again in two weeks. Miss you. Bye-bye.